All righty. So we've got big news in in both Ukraine and uh, out of here in Florida. And honestly, I'm going to try I'm going to try and get to both. So I think we'll start with Ukraine since that's going to, I, I think, affect the most amount of people and be the most relevant. Um, Zelensky is now saying that Ukraine is actively preparing to attack Crimea. Now, I don't know how they're going to do that because from the last I checked the battle lines, I think that Ukraine still hasn't regained all of the territory leading up to Crimea. So I don't think that Ukraine has a um, uh, control of the land that borders Crimea anymore. Uh, so I guess they'll have to retake that first. It's probably a part of his plan. Um, but beyond that, uh, I was very concerned uh, last I spoke about Ukraine, specifically about Ukraine attacking Crimea, which, a court, which as far as Russia is concerned, in, in Putin's eyes and in the eyes of the people of Russia, Crimea is Russian sovereign territory. And so therefore, um, uh, this is not just Ukraine taking back its territory. They would see this as Ukraine seizing Russian territory or at least attacking you know, Russian territory. Um, and if Ukraine were to do that, with American F-16 jets deploying American-made bombs, um, potentially with American contract soldiers or pilots, um, to, to me, that would be as close uh, to a, um, an Archduke Ferdinand moment as you could get. Actually, it'd be way past an Archduke Ferdinand moment. What am I talking about? I mean, th that would be American troops crossing over and bombing Russia directly. And so I've been very, very concerned about that prospect. Um, however, according to one Joseph Robinette Biden, uh, the supposed president of the United States, he says that F-16s are off the table for now. So I don't know if Zelensky is talking about preparing this invasion in sort of a long-term sense, um, and this will still include the F-16 plan, which I've warned about um, and warned against, um, or if Zelensky is talking about attacking Crimea without receiving the American F-16s, which I think would be difficult because if Zelensky has been asking for F-16s for a while now, that would tell me that the Ukrainians are low on aircraft, uh, that they do not have enough jets, um, they do not have enough planes, and if that's the case, then how are they going to bomb Crimea? You need air power if you're going to launch, um, you know, that kind of attack. And I think more than, you know, seize Crimea, um, you know, with Ukrainian troops, I don't think that would be a very good use of, uh, that wouldn't be a very efficient use, I think, of Ukrainian manpower while they still have so much of the rest of the country, like the Donbass, that they have to retake um, in their eyes. Um, I would think that they would focus on that first because, you know, Crimea is a peninsula. It, it, they can just cut it off like they did before. I mean, and, you know, that would be a um, better way of neutralizing it um, and save Crimea for last. You know, you, I don't see why they would want to try and invade and then, you know, spend, expend um, so many troops holding Crimea if they were able to retake it, which nobody believes they would. Even the Pentagon says Ukraine cannot retake Crimea. So um, I would tend to think that uh, whatever Zelensky is alluding to uh, would be delayed until Biden and his puppet masters finally relent and send old Volodymyr uh, the F-16s uh, that his heart so desires. And in that time, I think that that, that would give the Ukrainians um, some time to try and tr maybe train their own domestic pilots to fly these F-16s. Still would be very bad. I mean, it's not as bad as having American contract, uh, you know, retired pilots uh, flying these jets. Um, but it's still pretty bad. You, you still have American jets flying into Russia, dropping bombs on Russian citizens. I don't think that there's any scenario in which uh, the Ruskies um, just ignore that. 
and uh, consider that to be fair play. This still to me appears to be uh, the, uh, the neoliberals, um, for lack of a better term, in the West, um, just trying to poke the bear and openly wage war against Russia and call Putin a chicken. That's, that's all I see here. When Putin talks about, you know, the, uh, the downsides of nuclear powers going to war with one another, I think that the neoliberals in the West now, they just, their attitude is, do it, you won't. And they're essentially willing to do everything um, short of launching a nuclear first strike against Russia. They want to goad Putin into launching that first strike, and then I guess they believe that in the end they'll win, um, because even if the West is destroyed, well, at least Putin will be destroyed too, although I doubt he would be. I would think Putin would be in the bunker under the Kremlin, um, and Russia has more nuclear bombs that we know of uh, than any other country anyway, um, so I would imagine that uh, you know if it's a matter of who can destroy um the most, I think that the Ruskies probably uh, have uh, have got the edge there. They certainly have uh, enough nuclear weapons, I would think, to you know at least blow up the entire planet once over. Um, you know, they used to have that statistic during the Cold War. You know, between the U.S. and the Soviet Union, how many times that combined those two countries could destroy the entire planet. Um, and I forget how high the number got, but, you know, it's come down over time. But thanks to, you know, the nuclear disarmament treaties, which have now all been shredded, um, they're all gone. All of the Cold War diplomacy um, down the toilet. So all in all, um, it does seem like uh, somewhat positive news. At least we have Biden coming out it again saying no F-16s for now um, or for the time being. It was something like that. Um, but you do still have... Zelensky saber rattling over Crimea. Now, coming back to the news here in Florida, uh, today officially uh, Governor DeSantis signed a bill abolishing um, the. Uh, oh gosh, what was it called? The Boggy Creek District, or. I can't remember now. There's uh, whatever whatever Disney's private government is called uh, that, that was established back in the 60s. Walt Disney, you know, the man himself, got a huge concession from the Lord, Florida legislature back then. And his company uh, was granted um, the right to rule over uh, their own property and act as their own government and be uh, largely immune from state laws. They made their own laws. And they completely have not only, you know, revolutionized the area that they control officially, the entire region um, around Walt Disney World has been changed forever. Um, and personally, I don't think it's for the better. It's all been turned into suburbs, essentially. Um, as well as a lot of touristy stuff, but you know, it's really the suburbs, uh, all the population growth, uh, the importation of Democrat voting Disney employees and their ilk um, that has changed that area of Florida from a uh, you know, very conservative agricultural, um, largely citrus growing chain of communities into bland, unoriginal, oppressive suburbs. And so that's what bothers me most, is the, um, the alienation of the natural environment, uh, the complete clean, uh, clean slate. That whole approach of just clear-cutting everything, not working within the natural environment and, you know, building communities that are a little more um, in coexistence, um, towns that are shaped by their geography, none of that. Um, it's just clear-cut all the trees, uh, flatten all the hills, 
and uh, pave over it with concrete and build your uh, two-story 24 to 5,000 square foot uh, concrete block homes with uh, side yards so narrow that you can stretch out your arms and touch the house next to you with your two-car garage and your uh, you know 5,000 square foot lot with a probably thousand square feet of grass not to mention the thousands and thousands of acres of uh, apartment buildings all this uh, really goes back to the founding of Walt Disney World but anyway that's not why Disney is losing their corporate government uh, or as DeSantis calls it the corporate kingdom uh, they're losing it because uh, they decided to try and influence Florida state politics directly um, Disney as a corporation took a stance against a piece of legislation uh, that was known uh, in the media as the don't say gay bill and uh, the state's elected officials did not take kindly to that and I think that this is the right reaction I think that um, what was clear after that whole debacle was that Disney um, no longer saw itself as a guest um, and rather uh, saw itself as an entity which could exercise its influence to control the state government um, regardless of what the voting population actually might uh, want. And to be fair, I think that Disney always would have felt that way. Um, that is human nature to a certain degree. So it wasn't too long after that that DeSantis uh, announced that Disney needed to be cut down to size and that uh, their uh, corporate monarchy was going to be abolished. And originally the plan was just to dissolve this special district and um, uh, let it go back uh, to being a part of, um, I think, it, well, it was, it was definitely part of Orange County. It might have also been part of Osceola County, because if those of you know where, where Disney World is, it's, you know, it's right on the border of the two. Disney World itself, I think, is actually closer to Kissimmee. Um, it, I believe, is over the Osceola County line. But either way, um, the under the original proposal for abolishing the corporate kingdom, um, all of this land would have just fallen back under the jurisdiction of Osceola and uh, Orange Counties, and uh, or either or both. And then the uh, the county, which I guess opposed this idea because they were fond of Disney said well then we're just going to raise everybody's taxes who lives here and because uh, we're going to have to pay for disney's debt and you know you're a big dummy desantis and desantis took that opportunity to say you know what no we're not going to give this district back to these uh put these blue counties these two blue counties deep blue counties in charge uh of this land that was formerly controlled by disney uh we're going to have a, it essentially be a its own sort of county that is has commissioners appointed directly by the state so it is an interesting solution but i think that it's a it's a very creative one and i think a smart one because it allows um uh the, the governor to put the screws uh to disney anytime they like you know i should look up i don't know if there are schools in this area but if so well no i think i would realize that if there were walt disney world run public schools so i doubt i don't think there are um but i was going to say if that were the case you know for one example you could have um non-woke schools you know in a very in a very woke area that'd be a funny contrast but uh, i don't i think that we're not going to see much on this yet but in time i think that this will um this is going to be a big deal this is a big change in state politics and i think that we will see this come up in the future uh, more than once i think that this will be a recurring um, issue in florida politics how the the former you know disney administrative district 
uh, is governed by the state. So, uh, with that said, I will see you folks back here tomorrow.